Lava corridor. So just one hint, because this this question was about the corridor, so it means the multiple location. Therefore, we, if you are looking for collisions, yes, we could go to each of those and locations the along the along the corridor. But is the easiest way is to go to collision collisions collisions and put the location in the collision filter, the collision location description. If you put that. You can just copy uh, description and from document and paste here. Then those collisions will be quickly displayed in the grid. And then you can click on the map to, to see those collisions right there. Okay, so if it if we are talking about the corridors, you should uh, I would recommend to go to the collisions and look at corridor locations from there. OK, so that would be uh, all for me on my end. Now I'm going to pass it to uh, to Amir. Thank you. Thanks, Greg, for your presentation. Um, can everyone see and hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, him. Yes, we can hear you, Amir. Awesome. So let's go ahead and start this in the second section of our tutorial today. We're going to cover the basics of the collision module. And in order to start that, I'm going to start with a small presentation and I want to show you um, some concept in the collision module. So we already, so we went to the hands on experience. And sorry, just let me. Um, switch my display. Great. So uh, in the collision module, before going to uh, in get into the web system and talking about the uh, the collision module, I want to I want you to uh, review. I want to review with you some of the collision fields that we are going to talk about. And it is important for us to understand. And these are because you are engineers and these fields are going to be real helpful for you to understand uh, your infrastructure, what's happening at your infrastructure and what was the cause of the collisions at your infrastructure. And if it's, there is any need to fix something or, or improve some uh, aspect of your infrastructure, for example, you want to fix a pavement of a road or you want to fix an intersection, then this will give you a good understanding of what's happening. And these are the key information as an engineer you need to understand and you need to move forward with this one. So the first one is the location. So and we need to understand the location and Greg talked about you talked with you about the location in, in the infrastructure, how you can filter them. But there's really important in a collision to know that if a collision is intersection related or non intersection related, that's a key feature because the treatment that you will apply in future is really heavily dependent on if the collisions are happening intersectional related or non intersection related. The other important factor is severity and severity is defined by three categories. Is it it is it is either fatal, which means that someone died in that collision. And there is a definition. There is a. I'm sure that you can check our uh, guidelines and tutorials later on in more advanced tutorials that we are going to do. But fatal means that in the 30 days of that collision, there will be a, um, um, there was a fatality happen in that collision. It could be uh, injury collisions, which are there will be one person at least injured in that collision. It, and there is PDO which is property damage only. So you are going to hear that one a lot. So, and it means that no one was injured, but it's just only um, a car. It was a car crash that for example, two cars or infrastructure or a car was uh, uh, impacted. The other one, which is really important, I'm going to show you a couple of slides about is initial impact type. And the concept of initial impact type is that what was the uh, so essentially it, it def defined the general path of the vehicles uh, where um, the collision happened and what was the first 
impact and general direction of the uh, vehicles were traveling, how they impacted each other. I'm going to go over that one in detail later on. And the other one is driver maneuver. What was the driver was doing in, uh, before uh, doing that one? Was they were going too fast or they were doing too slow or they were turning and different conditions about the there are, there are different maneuvers that were done by the driver. And the driver condition is important. For example, if the driver was under influence of drug or it was distracted, for example, by a cell phone or uh, other tools, or for example, the driver was drunk. So these ones are important, for example, for you to provide some uh, enduring adjustment to that one. For example, when the driver condition is, for example, there, there are lots of youth drivers that are using drugs, then it means that you as engineers, you need to set up campaigns and um, I don't know, go to university and set up something to prevent those uh, done and talk to the young people to do that one. If there's a, for example, drunk driving, then you need to have, in, for example, uh, um, better enforcement and better uh, information session for the drivers. Same applies for pedestrian condition, pedestrian action, and then the vehicle type. So we we need to, this is really important to see that why those collisions happen and what was the type of the vehicles that were involved. Were the trucks, were the passenger cars, were the bus? For example, if there was too many bus that was involved, then you need to educate the bus drivers. Maybe you need to install. Um, um, you, you need to install um, tracking devices on the buses or speed limiters on the buses to to prevent them from going too fast and causing driver uh, causing collisions. So these are really important fields that you need to understand and be familiar with the um, uh, familiar when you're processing and understanding the collision at your infrastructure. Let's talk about one of the most important one, which is initial impact thought. And as because you are road authorities and you will have uh, some road under your jurisdiction and you need to understand what the initial impact type is. And then um, I want to show you and then I will talk about the collision diagram later on when we are talking. But just first, I want to go through this one. So the initial impact type describe the general path of vehicles immediately before the first impact. Just consider that there might be multiple impact for different time, for example, when the vehicles, for example, initially they had, they were have an angle collision. One vehicle was going from, for example, south to north from south, uh, and then one vehicle was going from east to west and they have a collision. So the first impact was, for example, at an angle collision. We will go and describe it, but it's really important to have that initial impact type, understand that one, and then that will help you to to fix your infrastructure if there is something um, going on there. So there are different several types that I'm going to cover today. So in my slides, you will see that there will be one on the left. It's describing this is the title. What's the type of the initial impact type? And here's the description of the initial impact type. And then on the right side, you can see the, uh, the icon for that one. There is a concept that collision diagram I'm going to talk about later, but this icon is really important. Let's just start with one of the simpler ones, which approaching. Essentially, means that two cars were approaching each other and they were hit um, each other and that one. So initial direction of this vehicle is opposite of each other. It means that the cars were moving together and hit each other in this one, uh, in the front. And at least one of the vehicles were impacted by um, in the front of the vehicle. For example, there's an example here. The vehicle one is moving northbound. When we are saying northbound, means that they are uh, going from south to north of that intersection, for example. And vehicle two is going north and southbound. It's going from the up down. And then, for example, maybe one of them was uh, was a stop, which doesn't mean that it's parked or disabled. And then they hit each other from uh, the front. And as you can see on the icon on the right, you can see that. Usually, this is how the icon in the diagrams are being displayed and showed. So there's one coming. You see that there's a usually there's an arrow. That arrow means a vehicle. And for example, that arrow has a direction. You can see one one is going northbound. The one on the bottom, which is going from south to the north. And the one there's another car involved in this collision, which is going from the north to the south. It's a southbound vehicle. And then you can see that there is this is the, in, the the point of impact, and you can see that they were kind of having a head on and kind of approaching collision. Is it clear to everyone? 
Hello? Any questions? Yes, uh, in our coding, we call it uh, head-on. Yes, head-on, head-on or approach. I, I mentioned both are used interchangeably. Yes, head-on or approaching vehicles and collisions. There is another initial impact type, which is called angle collision, which means that the, uh, there were two vehicles and the initial direction of their travel was 90 degrees. They were perpendicular to each other. It means that one vehicle was coming, for example, at the intersection. One vehicle was moving from, let's say, that eastbound and going, for example, from west to east. And there was one vehicle going from south to north. It's kind of a northbound. And for example, they hit each other. Uh, and this is called angle collision. And, the, and, the, and you can see the diagram, the diagram for this one is here. So there was one vehicle going, uh, you see, one vehicle going north, for example, and one vehicle going northbound and one vehicle is going eastbound and in the middle of the way sorry oh, sorry and then when they were going eastbound they wanted to do for example a left turn and then hit the other car here so that's what's happening and this is the angle collision and there's another term it's called turning movement which means that the vehicles initially were on the same path they were going on the same road for example they were saying the, the path of their travel was parallel to each other so essentially one was going up and one was going for example from from northbound or southbound they were going there and one of them started to do for example a right turn in this case that really was doing a right turn and then they hit each other it's important to understand the difference between these two because it's important why is that important is that for the, there are different treatments for that one. Let's say that you have an angle collision, means that they are coming from different roads onto that intersection. One is coming eastbound, for example, one is going northbound. And if they, if they have a collision, if there is no traffic control at that intersection, you may need to inst install a stop signs, or you may need to install an always stop or four-way stop, as you may say that one. Or if they already have a four-way stop, and this is happening, you need to maybe install a um, uh, traffic signal in that intersection. So you need to prioritize the movements in that intersection. Or maybe you need to, for example, reduce the speed limit There are all multiple factors. Going. But when the turning movement is happening, both of them, for example, it means that you cannot change it with the signal, installing a signal, because both of them were moving at the same time. Maybe you need to have a permitted left, uh, protected left turn, for example, or you need to have a right uh, protected right turn left kind of movement or left turn move moves there. So this is really important to understand what is the cause of the that one uh, cause of your in collisions, and then based on that one make a proper decision and a wise decision based on the situation happening, and that's why we are talking the initial impact of is one of the most important aspects. Any questions, any comments? OK, if you have a question, please raise your hand and I'm sure, uh, ask or someone in that uh, there will bring you the microphone and you will be able to ask your question. And then there is another initial impact, type, which is side swipe, which means that collisions where the impacts were traveling in the same or opposite direction. And they had they collide on the side of each other. This is really, I think, obvious. And you can see that two vehicles were moving in the same direction. They hit it on the side of that one. This is the meaning of this sign. And here we have a rear end, which means that two vehicles were moving in the same direction, and then uh, same direction, and then uh, they hit one of them hit in struck in the rear of the other vehicle. So, for example, if there's a rear, there are lots of rear end collisions at one side of an intersection. There could be, for example, issues with the pavement. The friction of the surface is not right. So you need to send someone, for example, to test the friction and see if the friction is properly and the pavement condition is proper. Or, for example, maybe there is a problem with the signal timing. And, um, for example, you need to have uh, improve your signal timing so that make sure that um, you have proper uh, signal timing to prevent the rear end and um, other measures that you can implement. But I'm just giving you these examples uh, that are happening. And single motor vehicle, there's another type, it's called single motor vehicle unattended, or they call it SMV essentially. That one vehicle was moving and in the SMV unattended, they hit another vehicle which was uh, stopped there or is disabled or, or abandoned on the runway. Remember, this is different than 
a vehicle is stopping for loading or unloading. This that vehicle is not counted as um, SMV. It's kind of it will count as a rear end. But this is really important to understand. And then there's a single module vehicle other that is that when the vehicle uh, hit a fixed object or kind of a pedestrian or animal, and you can see the icon is like this one. This is the concept of initial impact type. And I think as a road authority, this is really important for you to understand. And later on, we'll have a discussion with the police as well, so that the police will introduce information accurately with you as engineers in the office, you are able to do this one. And as you can see, when I'm talking about the collision crash database, I'm not just talking about the system, a database that contains the information. We need to have a proper information there. We need to have a proper understanding of what's happening in the system. And then you engineers will come with the proper data. You will um, fix uh, and you will uh, try to improve the safety of your nation and your people. Another topic, any questions, any comments on this section of the uh, section? Good. So uh, I move to the next one, which is called the emphasis area. And this is one of the parts that I'm going to show you in a dashboard. And it's a really important concept in a road safety planning. Usually this is a group of collisions, the largest group of collisions, and we usually try to group collisions by certain characteristics. That characteristics could be location, it could be by the action of the driver or the vehicle, uh, and then move from there. Uh, for example, we can see that we can convert collision and, uh, and do some um, um, analysis based on the intersection related collisions and see what's happening. If there are lots of collisions that are happening at intersections, then it means that we need to take actions. Or for example, for aggressive driving, if the drivers are going too fast or they're following the other cars too fast, uh, too close, or um, um, they are this, their speed is not proper to the weather condition, then we need to have training sessions. So it's really important for us to understand the drive, aggressive driving. Or if there are lots of collisions related to pedestrian, it means that better education for the pedestrians, uh, maybe in uh, making more crosswalks, maybe pathways for the pedestrians. These actions need to be taken. So it's really important to study these uh, emphasis areas, try to come up with the proper uh, solutions. For young drivers, I talk about young drivers, maybe you need to have sessions in universities, or maybe you, for example, in Canada, for example, there were lots of young driver collisions was involved. So they, what they did is that they introduced some policies like zero tolerance policy for, for example, alcohol in their blood. So if a, if a teenage, if it's a young driver has alcohol in their blood, their, uh, their driving license will be impounded immediately. Or, for example, they will introduce the graduate uh, licensing. For example, they do, do the exam and they need to drive for one year with someone with a four year experience of driving. And then after that, they need to do a full G, they call it driving license and they move forward. These are the things that people do. And if there's a truck driver, tr lots of trucks involved in the collisions, then you may need to install the speed limiters like what they did in US and Canada, or you need to educate or maybe monitor the hours of the drivings for trucks and prevent it. So these are the things that you need to ensure and do that. One. And based on what your analysis is, you need to allocate your resources to these groups and improve safety of at the network level. It's not just at one intersection, but it's important to understand what's happening in your overall, in your network and what's going on. Any questions, any comments? Good. So let's go to go and review the collision module together. And I'm going to talk to you about uh, the collision module. Uh, so as you can see on the menu there here, uh, uh, Greg uh, started to talk about them and uh, try to show you what was uh, the general concept, how to filter, and what's happening. I'm not going to cover them again because I think by now you need you will have a good understanding of what's happening and what do you have. But let's go and see, for example, let's say that we want to see the collision, uh, for example, fatal collisions. And I'm, I will go ahead and try to select the fatal collisions. I will go to the column and I will find the column accident severity and I will choose the fatal collision. I will press OK. And you can see that it will filter the fatal collisions for me. 
And I can see that there are 57 fatal collisions for me here. And even I can click on the map, I can show on map. And I need to, uh, sorry, just I need to select them first. Let me just um, close this one here for now. I will select all the collisions that I filtered. And I'm going to press uh, the button here to select all of the collisions and then show it on the map, for example. And I will click on the map and then um, I will see the collisions um, on the map. Sorry, just, I think my computer does not like the screen sharing. Let me just uh, bring this one here and go to the collisions again and try to uh, uh, filter based on the collision severity. So press OK. And then I can select all these ones and then show on the map. Great, now my map is showing up. Sorry, just my computer was on. And then it will show the map. And I can go ahead and as Greg may describe to you in the previous section, I can select a section of the, for example, in uh, my first time area that I want to, and for example, draw a polygon and here and finish it. And once my selection is done, you see that this section is selected and I can go and say that, please show me all the collisions to me. And it automatically goes and filter the collisions for me here. As you can see, all the collisions in that area are in here and you can see the filter is automatically applied. You can see that my collision fatal collisions are here and I selected a fatal collisions in that area in my network. Um, here is the good. Now let's go into one of these collisions and take a look and see what's happening and what are the information here. So I click on one of these ones. You can see that I, I was here and I click on one of these rows and I can go inside and it will show me what's the information about the collisions. As you can see on the page here, on the top, I have these panels and these panels provide more information. Based on your school resolution, some of them might not fit. So you need to press this button on the right here to move forward and um, see the details and different uh, tabs for that one. So for example, in the general section, I have the general information about that collision. So what was the division that it happened? What was the accident registration number? This is a unique number that you can refer to. And you see that occurrence number, name of the officer, accident date and time, the location that described by the police officer, initial impact type. This one was, for example, pedestrian collision. It was people were seriously injured and the total number of participants in this collision was two people. There was no victims. And there are all different information. For example, this one was happened when the weather condition was clear and it was a daylight. And on the right side, you can see that this collision is assigned to an infrastructure. This is the road here. You can see that I can zoom in or zoom out. This, this has been highlighted. You see that into that mid block, this is the road segment that was selected there. And in that road segment, this one is shown out. It's, show, it's shown here. As you can see, I can, as Greg said, if I feel my left mouse and move it, I can move the map ahead, move the map around. I can zoom in and zoom out by clicking the, by using my mouse to scroll or this button here. And if I use my left uh, mouse, I can rotate the map as well. And you can see that the name of the uh, road segment is selected here and it's, it's selected here. And you can see the information here. And if I go down, you can see the Joe ID is showing at the end here. And even if I want further information, I can click here and it will show me the GPS location of that collision, exact location. So these are the, the longitude and latitude and uh, the X and Y coordinates of that one. And then uh, I will go to the roads. These ones are the roads that were involved in this collision. And you can see that there was one road uh, race sports road. This information or information that was uh, uh, was put by the police officers there. And then here it will be vehicles, and you say that there was a one minibus involved in this one. 
And let's go to the tab driver and you say that there was driver number one and age was 76 and he was a male driver. And you can see the action was speed too fast for the condition and the driver was inattentive. So the driver essentially was inattentive and then it was going too fast and it was a careless driver. Uh, passenger information, there was no passenger information available for this collision. And if I go to the pedestrian, it's ended. Oh, there was one pedestrian. So it means that that, um, um, that, um, um, well, it, that bus driver hit a pedestrian and it was severely injured. And the age of the, uh, the person who was involved, unfortunately, was 11 years old. And it was a boy, and that 11 years old boy that was hit by the bus. And the bus driver was uh, inattentive. And you Maybe can see that. Question. Pardon? Pardon? The Netherlands hand it up. Yeah, so I'm um, asking is it possible to uh, filter the accident in terms of uh, either Kenna, Kura, or Kera Roads? Sure, and yes, if not, is it possible to add that feature? Sure, I will show you to you. Yes, uh, let me finish the details of one collision and then I will go back and I will show you what's going on. Yes. So and see that the people will show the summary of all the people who were involved. So you can say that it will show the driver, the pedestrian, the role, the name and just general information of all of them. And if I go to the attachment, if the police officer took a picture uh, or attached anything to it so they can attach it here. And the remarks are remarks from police officers if they want to, for example, have any notes, the date of dispatch, or the summary of the accident remarks and investigation. And one other important part is the change log. So if anyone goes and change this record, this information will be uh, recorded here and it will be there. And the validation is the section that if the, we define validation rules, if, if you define validation rules in the system, then if each collision that is saved, you will be able to see the information. And if it, there's not valid, it will give you error message and it, this information will be available here. The other important feature are here is on the top left on the top left of this page. You can see that there is a report. And if I click on this one, I can export the data in Excel or I can show it in the report viewer. And this one will show me all the information about that one so I can print it. For example, here, and you can see this, there are two pages uh, associated with this one, and you have the general information, uh, the road inf road name, and then, for example, uh, the road information. Let me zoom in a little bit, and so you will be able to see. Um, let me just zoom in and uh, go ahead here, and you can see the information for that one, and then you can see. Uh, the information for that one. This is really good for printing. You can directly print it to any printer that you want to, for example, and you can um, uh, save this report as PDF, Excel, uh, Word document, HTML, CSV, and image. So you can share it with anyone uh, in your organization if you want and talk about it. And then uh, that's all. And that's how you can generate a report. Let me go back. Uh, so the question was that can we filter this one based on who is the uh, uh, the uh, the county and who is um, holding the authority? So I believe that you have the information about um, the um, about the um, sorry, just uh, where is the is it in area? No, area is rural. In, or let me see if you have the field there. Junction type. So essentially you have the county information. So, but the county does not include the road authority. Uh, we can add the field for the road authority. For example, if you have that information in the, in the, uh, in the uh, infrastructure, we can bring that information for you from there. So essentially we can see and say that who was the road authority there. So we are, we, we, we will be able to do that one for you. I'm taking note. Essentially, in infrastructure, what do you call it in infrastructure? Sorry. Uh, you call it municipality. What, what, what's the name of that jurisdiction, right? So you want to bring essentially jurisdiction. Who is uh, who has jurisdiction over this one, right? Great. So in the collisions, we will bring the jurisdiction. 
I'm writing down this one so that we can add that feature. Any questions? Anything? Yeah, uh, we are agreeing that uh, if you add the jurisdiction there, then uh, we'll be able to filter with yes, the, whether exactly. it's Kura Road, whether it's a Kera Road or a Kena Road. Sure, we will add that uh, that filter. Don't worry about it. So yes, that's that's not a big deal. And so yeah, and then we'll bring the jurisdiction. And then what else do we have? Okay, great. So now this is this is the overview of that one. And let's say that hey, for example, I want to see uh, the reports for this one. So for example, I want to go ahead and filter um, the roads. For example. Um, I think let's have some hands-on experience. Just no before there, let me just show you another part of that one. Is here is that I'm going to do the uh, analytics on these reports, for example. I, I'm going to select uh, all the uh, records that I like to, and I will record, record select these ones. Even I can apply filters if I want. And here you see this icon is represent reports. And if I move my mouse over it, it will show underneath that this is reports. I click on that one and I can export all the data that I have and as Excel. I'll press that one and you can see my Excel is downloaded. And if I open, you can see all the information about those uh, collisions are exported. And you see in the Excel table and you can see all the general information all the information here, for example, road dot, for example, um, all the information are available and you are able to filter, uh, read it and export it and do further analysis if you like to do later on or share the data with other colleagues or universities or whatever your policy is. Just that's one you can do. The other feature here in the report is the charge report. And when you click on this one, uh, it goes and it starts to do uh, lots of analysis on your data and try to draw some charts for you. So essentially you will have the number, for example, the first chart shows the number of collisions in different years and it will have three theories. You can see that it has fatal collisions at the, this one here. It has property damage only in collisions as a green and as a blue, the fatal and injury collisions. And you can see this one has two axes. And on the bottom, the information for the this data that was uh, up there is available in the year summary. So you can see that, for example, year 2016, because this is a sample of your data. Later on, once the project is fully implemented, you will see that there were six fatal collisions. There were three uh, uh, injury collisions, 35 um, property damage only, and total collision of 46, and so on. If I go to the next page, for example, it shows that what was the distribution of the collision based on the month. And for example, maybe you will be find a correlation based on, for example, the weather condition, and maybe you need to do something. Or based on the day of the week. So for example, what's happening in different days of the weeks and uh, what's happening um, in your network based on the day of the week. You can go ahead and see other, for example, based on the time of the day. For example, you can see that you have some collisions on the morning or in the evening, peak hour. And here on the bottom is the weekend one. And you can see the weekend one is more happening around 6 p.m. And then if I move to the next one, for example, it shows that, for example, the collision in road sections uh, by initial impact type. And you can see that this is a nice part chart and showing that how many of the collisions are happening. And then it shows that at your signal as intersections, um, how is the initial impact type? And you can see that 41% of that one are uh, the angle collisions, and which means that maybe there is need to be improvement in your signal timings or uh, um, in your pavement or other aspects of your safety um, uh, projects. It shows that uh, the collision by lighting condition, uh, collision by location, how many of them happen in different areas, and then it shows the top frequent, for example, intersection with high frequency of collisions in that six years of data. And then it shows the road segments with highest frequency of collisions in the last six years. And um, let me go ahead and show you another aspect. And oh, sorry, just let me bring the report as well. The same as all of our reports, you can save this one as a PDF, Word, Excel, image, whatever you want. So we can say that, oh, I want it as a PDF. And we'll download the PDF for me. 
and you can see that the charts are nice and you can print this one, share it uh, with uh, everyone else. Great, and then let me close this one. And you can print it. And there's validation report, which is not necessarily really, uh, necessary for you, but this one essentially goes and do validation on the on the all the reports and for example all the collisions and you can see that it shows a summary of that one it showed that for example for some of these collisions the severity is not identified say so that the collision severity is required and this is the collision severity and uh, this is the report and you can export it to a, uh, excel or um, you can export it to csv as you want so that you you can for example review them later uh, with the police officers or any other uh, people you can see the summary is available it shows what was the collision number the unique number of the collision and what's the validation status and what was the message there and you can see it's all available and it's really nicely formatted you can collapse them you can see that it has lots of features that mean enable editing and you can see that for example you can collapse them for multiple collisions and you can uh, summarize it and report it and even if um that's that's the case so let's close this one and um so we covered most of that one greg talked about it one other feature in the grid that i want to show you is that for example if i want to see um, the collisions and I want to group them by their join and see that what was what are the toughest location that I have. You can see that here I can drag this column and drag it on the top line here header and say that drag the columns header here. And if I do that one, it will automatically groups my collisions by Joe ID. And you can see that it will sort it by by the count as well. You can see that for example this Joe ID this location. You can see that the, all the collisions happen for those locations are there. So I can group my data uh, based on my Joe ID. I can put it back here, or for example, if I want to uh, uh, group it by, for example, initial impact type, I can simply just drag and drop it here. I can see that, for example, uh, the initial impact type pedestrian, there is one of one. And then there is initial impact type empty. There was no initial impact type entered. There are 23. And then, for example, initial impact at rear end is here, and I can expand them. And even I can group by different types. For example, I say that, for example, expand, uh, group it by second aspect, which is division. And now it shows that initial impact of pedestrian, there is one of one. If I open it, it will show me by different um, divisions, and it will automatically. Um, um, divided by this one. And let's say that I want to, for example, then later on, I want to add another aspect to my report. And um, I will, for example, I can do, for example, let's say that uh, I will go ahead and let's bring the collision severity. Let me just go ahead and severity, accident severity. And then now another layer is added. And you can see that in each division, how many, for example, seriously injured, fatal, slightly injured I have. So essentially, it's a really powerful tool for summarize your data and keep the data there. Any questions, any comments? So let's, before moving to the next section of that one, um, uh, let's have some hands-on experience and try to do it to all together. If you go to the second section of your uh, your handouts that you are with you, there's a couple of questions. So I want you to uh, uh, do uh, the question number one to four. These are the items that we covered right now, and let's uh, do these together and solve these ones. So everyone has the handout, and can you go to the section two, the second section, and the, uh, try to answer question number one, two, four.
I know uh, it's a bit of a feedback. So everyone, let's try to solve the first question. Um, Tim, is, is there any questions or comments? Please unmute your laptop, uh, Tim, and mute the handheld microphone if it's possible. Hello, hello, Engineer Monica. Amir? Yes, hello, Engineer Monica. I have one comment on the reports that one is able to generate from sure. the system. Um, there is an Excel that you are able to generate. And uh, my concern is on uh, the formatting of that Excel sheet. Uh, I'll export mine, but uh, the way it's appearing, it's not really helpful at all. So I don't know what you can do. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm muted. Yes, I can hear you. Uh, don't worry about it. I, I can I, I hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I can hear you. I can hear you, uh, NJ Monica. Hello, are you able to hear me? Yes, I am able to hear you. Hello. Yes, I can hear you, Engineer Monica. Amir, are you able to hear me? Yes, I am able to hear you. Can you hear me? Greg, can, can you hear me? Greg, can yes, you hear I can me? Hear you Hello? I can, yes, I can hear both of you. Yeah. Hello. Uh, hello, Engineer Monica, can you hear me? Uh, Amir? Yes, yes, I was saying the, the format of the year. Yes, yes, yes. Now you have projected it. Um, yes. It doesn't really look very good, so I don't know what you can do um, to the formatting to make it be in a format that somebody can be able to read and make some sense out of it. Exactly. You see just here, there are lots of information. The, ex the reason that we export to Excel is to um, to uh, to export all the data to, as a backup. Can you hear me? And Jim Monica? Can you hear me? Looks like it seems that she doesn't hear you. Jim Monica, do you hear me? Greg? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you. Can you like hear me now? Like... I think they were muted. I think we were muted. And Jim Monica, you're muted yourself now. You can go I on. Think... I can hear you. Good, great. So this export excel is not for manipulating data or something this is just as a backup or if you want to share it with third parties and you can see that there are lots of information you see that there are lots of columns added to this is here because uh, there are lots of information you can see that there are multiple pedestrians multiple people involved and they're all added here and because in this exporting this one to the excel is really hard because for example there could be multiple vehicles there you can see that for example there are multiple vehicles involved and we need to include all the vehicles there so that's why the nature of this export is not easy to handle because you, this is you see that there is one collision record there are some general information which are really easy to format and put there but if you look at the vehicle information or the driver information there could be multiple records of vehicles there and each of them could have multiple different information available there. If we go and let me just show you what it means. If I go go here and try to add, let me just close this one and add a collision here. And I go to the vehicle, for example, vehicles, and I add information. So you see, these are the information you collect for each vehicle. And if you are, you see how many how many are there? There are one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times two. It's 18 information for each vehicle. And if, if you want to export it in Excel in a columnar, you need to have it as a, added as a different columns there. So formatting this document is relatively hard. And if you have any specific format in your mind, please take one of those files and try to format it the way you want. And we'll try to make it as close as that one to you. But generally, because of the nature of the data, that export to Excel is not necessarily will end up really good. 
in any ways. Amir, Amir, Amir. is there a possibility yes. of selecting only the columns that you'd like to export so that yes. you don't export so, everything? Maybe there is some sure. specific areas that you'd want to export. Is it possible sure. to do that to um, that's a good idea. Make some adjustments to... so that we can select what to export for a report. Sure. So let me let me okay let me think about it and because in general information they are available in grid but again in the vehicles or drivers there are multiple colors we need to have a more sophisticated system for exporting that one maybe we need to create a new page for you to export that so during Excel because what happens is that um, you, you see here it's easy for example I can say that hey for example you don't want for example accident type for example I can just simply just bring the column chooser and remove this one and you don't see it in here and then export but in the in each of these ones there are multiple records drivers for the pedestrian for the people involved but i will think of something and we'll try to come up with the solution but your idea i like your idea dr okay thank you so i'm writing down i write down um, for that one. So are you doing the uh, question number one? Everyone is doing the question number one, please, uh, in section two. So, uh, Dr. Um, Okay, so can you um, let me know what's the status? Amir, may you want to also do on your another screen? question, please, from uh, Engineer Mirin. Okay. Um. Um, Greg. Okay. Can I proceed? Sure. Go ahead, please. Okay. Um, I was looking at how the report is presented, and some of the accident statistics that we normally analyze. We try to look at the kind of intervention and and policy directions to take. So I would have wanted to see. If, for example, I'm a user of these accident statistics, if, for example, I want to pick um, accidents according to vehicle type, let's mm -hmm. say um, public transport, saloon cars, lorries, trucks, pickups, or I want or like to know the kind of um, how the accidents affect school going children, for example. So if I want a report on the age bracket, uh, you know, maybe uh, 0 to 10, 10 to 12, or 30 to 35. Also, if I'm from the road authority, and I would like to know what kinds of road or services, for example, <coughs> causes the greatest accident. Is it uh, roads that have AC or service dressing, or whose condition is poor or fair? You know, so that you can be able to justify uh, the kind of interventions to be made. If we come to driver behavior, <clears throat> can we have data on the number of licensed and unlicensed drivers just mm -hmm. by a mere click of a button from the report? Sure. There's uh, other more reports into this one. This is just the basic reports in this session, but we'll go re review some of them because you reviewed many uh, reports, but they are available. This information is my next section of my that one. Okay. Please okay. let's let's just, let's uh, just do the exercise. Let's move on with the exercise, and then I will go ahead and show you uh, what's going on, what's happening later on. Okay. And then yes, we will cover your question, and we'll come back to that one. So everyone is solving the question number one. Did everyone solve the question number one? Yeah, Amir, I would recommend that you do on your own as well. So sure, definitely. Give give some so hints how to do it. Yes. So okay, question number one. So it says that what's what are the total number of collisions for intersection for the following years? Okay, 
So then I will go back to my uh, collisions and then Let me clear all my filters. Let me clear my um, groups and uh, sorry, just let me just put it back divisions here. This one back here. Even sorry, just a load um, my default. Sorry, just that's fine. Just let me just do that one. Um, so what I was trying to do is that I want to see the intersection collisions. So as Greg mentioned, so all the uh, intersection collisions they have. INT in their name. So I will search with Geo ID INT and we'll put uh, contains. So that contains INT. So I now filtered all the collision related to intersections in my um, uh, jurisdiction. And then I'm going to select all of these ones and go ahead and click on the reports and I go to the chart reports. And now I have the chart reports for my intersection related uh, these ones between year 2016 and 2021, I can simply filter because the question was asking 2019 to 21. I can apply a filter on the date. Let me show you how to apply a date. I think this is nice to do, I think, as an experiment. Uh, I will go to the accident year, accident date and time, and try to um, filter. Let me go to the accident date and time and try to filter 2019, 2020, and 2021. And I'll press OK. So now I filter only collisions for those dates, for those years. So now I have 19 in total. And then I will press on report. I'll say that chart report. And now this one shows me the number of the collision happened for those years. And then, for example, the question was asking 2019, what are the total numbers? So let's go, I will, sorry, just um, I'll go to this chart here. 2019, the total collisions were um, fatal. Oh, I see first, I think maybe I did. Okay. Um, I did some filtration. Sorry, just let me go back. I think let me clear my filters. And I think um, let me clear. I have more. That's one. And let's clear my filter. And I applied the let me display my selection and I will type int. I'll say the contains int and then I'll select all of these ones and go to the report and I'll say that um, uh, chart report. And in 2019, there was one collision happened there. So let me just put one collision at intersections. And then Um, I'm going to do for, for 2020, the total is six in my case. And I think your case should be the same. And then 2021, it will be uh, five collisions. As you know, these numbers are not real because uh, these are based on the sample of the data that um, um, Team Khan has uh, put into the system. Later on, you will have the actual data, but you know the gist of how it's doing. That one. Anyone is clear on this question? Everyone was able to uh, generate the same results. Should I move on to the next question, Dr. Okic? You're muted Hello. again here. Amir. Yes, go ahead. Amir. Yes, I can hear you. We seem to be getting two, 16 and 17. Pardon? Our answers for the intersections collisions 2019, 2020, and 2021. Mm -hmm. Two, 16 and 17. 
two, sixteen, and seventeen. Okay, so let me take a look and see what's going on. Um, that's fine. Just let me show. Okay, that's good. So, uh, okay, we'll check. You look at the chat. Just read for us, chat. <laughs> so for 2019, there are two, um, two, two of those ones. So they are missing some information. That's why it's not showing in the chart report. So that's right. So the answer will be two. Uh, let me fix the answer for myself. The right two, and then I'll go to the uh, 2019. What was the dates we were doing? 2019, 2020. It will be 10, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. Sixteen. Sixteen. What do you mean? Uh, what are you? So let me just go ahead back to here. Just let me just take a look. And what you're saying is because I'm just. I think that maybe maybe I'm that maybe, leads us uh, into a new uh, a question which came up. Like, mm -hmm. uh, is there a way to clear all the selections yes, so that yeah, when we search again, we are sure that uh, uh, we are searching yes. the entire thing, not already yes. in a selection. After yes. to... filtering, is there a way yes. to clear all the filters? Yes, if you come down here, say that, for example, if I make some filters, let's say that I will go and say that, for example, I wanted 2016, okay, or not 2016, 2019, for example, uh, 2019, and I'll press OK, and then you can see here is the filter underneath is showing up, and I can press clear here. And it will clear all this selection, and you can see that my number of collisions is right now 950, 195 essentially okay and then uh, there's another method which is called this is we will cover it in advanced reporting here you have another report view manager is essentially will have we can save the re reset sorry i hear feedbacks can you please mute yourself please Okay, I mean, okay, that's great. So then you have different views that you have defined. And this one, for example, the default is the, the previous one without any filter. So essentially, it will reset your views to the back to the normal ones. And now that was the cause. So let's go ahead and run the queries right now. I reset everything and I go ahead and do the 2019. You can see 2019, and I need to do the Joe ID uh, uh, contains. Uh, intersection, right? So uh, I will have two uh, collisions at two, 2019, which is two. That's fine. In 2020, let's remove this one and then let's do 2020. I will have 10 collisions, right? And then in, um, in uh, what's, what's happening? 2021, let's see. So I have seven collisions. Right? Is that good? Everyone has same numbers? Dr. Timokech, I cannot hear you. If you're talking, I cannot hear you. You're muted. Hello, Hello, NJ Michael. Yes, uh, in this case, we are looking at the total number of collisions for intersections for a given year. So when we are filtering, we filter for the year and then we also filter for the intersection. Mm -hmm. the doesn't matter. The, yeah. the order doesn't matter. 
the order doesn't matter. So you can you see the, because here at the end your filter is the accident date. Doesn't matter, but now what, what, what you're wondering if you want to select what intersections, collisions at, at intersections, I don't know if we select under accident type, there is the blunt junctions and the not junctions. So we are picking for junctions. Yes, yes. Are okay, sections got it. Junctions. Okay, this so is the information. Can... Yes, there are two sources of information here. Okay, one source of information is police officers. The accident site type is from, from P41. So, and police ask us to put it there. So the P41, can you, sorry, um, mute um, Dr. Ketch, Ketch, police. Can you hear me? So uh, you see that there are two sources of information. Uh, information number one is from your infrastructure and GIS, which the Joe ID is coming from, right? And the other source of information is from the P41, essentially what police filled in the form. And you can see that that information will be in, it will be uh, recorded at the accident site type. And this is a, a field from the P41 form. And you can see there are two values for that one, junction or not juncture, or if the police put, uh, put empty in it. And there is a possibility because the police are not so for example when the police goes at the intersection and did that one there is a miss uh, information so they assign that interest that collision for example the first collision that i can see here you see this this collision that the collision number ends with 661 as you can see this one is associated with an intersection but the accident site type is not junction which means that the police officer didn't fill the information properly and there's a contradiction. There is a there is a contradiction between these two pieces of information. OK. So this is about this is a really in, interesting question, really important aspect of the system. So you need to understand where is the source of data is coming and how you rely on that source of data and how you're going to interpret it because this information is coming from police officers and from that one. So in this case, I wanted to go with my GIS information because this is the valid source of information and I trust my GIS maps, everything. So that's why I searched based on GeoID. I didn't went for the accident site type, which is coming from the police officer from the field. That's the answer to question. Now, uh, let me let me add one, one comment to it. Uh, sure, go ahead. Because when we look at the collision uh, record, we also analyze these collision records, whether it makes sense or not. So let's say that there was a rear end collision, right? Rear end collision. So the rear end collision occurred, uh, let's say, uh, you know, 20 meters from the intersection. So the police officer put this as a not junction because it happened 20 meters from the intersection. However, this rear end collision might occur because of the uh, traffic signal operation. So for example, you have the red light, uh, people are going and then the, the lights switch to red, they start hitting the brakes and then there's a rear end collision which results in the intersection operation. So it occur, let's say 20 meters from the intersection, but the results of that uh, collision was uh, the intersection uh, operation. Therefore, it should be linked to the GIS, to the infrastructure, to the intersection. Uh, in Ontario, we have, for example, 30 meters buffer. Uh, so if there is an intersection, if the collision occurred within 30 meters, it's considered to be intersection collision. However, again, if you have a traffic signals and there's a huge lineup because of the uh, red light, the real collision is resulting from the intersection operation, not from the mid block. Therefore, uh, usually it's linked to the intersection, not to the mid block. So, in other words, no, goes to the junction, not to the not uh, not junction. Okay. So that's something what the engineers need to look at when they analyze the collisions. Thank you. So, if I want. To... Yes. 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 Yes.
Ist noch zu schnell. Is there any other questions? Sorry, our connection to the test server seems to be lost. I see. Maybe it's because of your internet connection. We're not sure whether it's the internet, but it looks like it's happening for all of us. <coughs> I see. So give it a couple of a couple of minutes. Let's move forward, and then we can just go ahead and just see that. I have a question. Go ahead. If you have any questions, we'll let me know. Okay. Um, I've noticed that if you do the individual years, for example, the way we did 2019, 2020, 2021, and got the numbers, figures, 10 and 7. If you do a, a filter for the three years combined, the data did not generated does not match. That is why we are getting one, six, and five. So where is the discrepancy? Sorry, I didn't get the question. What, why was the discrepancy? If you do a filter by year, the way yes. we have done. So 2019, we got two, 2020, we got 10, mm -hmm. and 2020, we got seven. Yes. So by cutting out a filter of the individual years, but if you do a filter for the combined years, uh, for example, the and you look at the chart, the numbers that come out are one, six, and five. Uh, sorry, I didn't get it. Uh, sorry, what do you, what did you say? Sorry, uh, Amir, I, I think the question is that if we go individually by from the grid, then we have two, I six, see. then. But if you go to the graph, the graph shows a little bit different numbers. Correct. I see. I see the graph shows different numbers. That's what you're saying. Okay, got it. Um, so let me check. Maybe graph is loading um, different information from that one. I will check and I will, I will get back to you about that one. Sure, I will, I will get it. That's fine. Okay, thank you. Yeah, because so sometimes the, the graphs are taking another uh, fields, right? And that's what might happen. Yes, that's what's happening. So we will make sure that the, the, the date and time is coming from that one. Oh, let's go to the next question. OK, any, any other questions, any other comments? In the room? OK, great. So let's go here. So you say that what are the total number of collisions for road segment for the following years? So essentially, I'll go there. This is really similar to that one, but here we want to say the, the first one. This is I already have. You can see at the bottom. I can see that I already have that filter. It say that for example, accident date is any of the 21, 2021, and GeoID contains int. And then if I, for example, I can simply filter it and say that this one does not contain int. And essentially, you can see the icon change. You say that there is an ABC and there's a cross on it. You say that it doesn't have a, 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 um, that one. So the answer is 38. But you can see that there are some rows that the, the location was not assigned to it. So if I want to make sure that this information are, are filtered, I may need to say that, for example, I need to exclude, ev I need to include everything but exclude the blanks. And my answer would become 39 in that case. Oh, sorry, I forgot the sorry, just not, not uh, sorry, just not um, so it does not contain sorry, int. let's do it this way. And uh, sorry, just let me put it int. And then so the answer to my question is 38.
And then if I go this, oh, this was, was what year was This is for that? all the years. You need to do the each year now. No, 21. Yeah, no, 2021. Sorry, 38. Sorry, for uh, uh, for 2021. Sorry, this was that one. So I need to go 38 here. For 2020, for 2020, um, um, let's search the date. The date is right now 2020. I'll remove that one. I would say that I want 2020. And the answer will become 29 for 2029. Sorry, just um, I need to go to my this one here. 2020 is 29. And then let's go ahead and do the um, 20. 19. And 2019 is 17. Awesome. Any question, any comments on this one? We don't have access to the bar. It, it appears that all of us, we are not accessing the database. Uh, maybe you are, I don't know, your internet connection went on, but you can see that I have access. Just press the refresh button, see if the reload button works for you. Yeah. Because maybe you, your, your internet connection for example, was lost for a second. You can see that I have access and loading it. Maybe there was an interruption in your internet connection at that moment. Please reload. And, and, the, and I, I do have a connection to... And Greg is in BC in Canada. It's not, uh, he's far away from me. No, 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 it's fine. I'll, I'll stop myself. Did you refresh your page and is it fixed? Hmm? It's working. Oh, okay. Good. It's been restored. Okay. Sure. No, it was, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Good. Okay. Um, so can you hear me? So should I go to question number three? Dr. Timokic, everyone was able to answer question number one and two. Should I move to the question number three? I cannot hear you if you're talking to me. Uh, Dr. Timo Kitch, I cannot hear you. You're muted. Okay. So is it okay? So let, let me move to the, the, the question yes, number Yes, uh, we are okay. Uh, our connection to the server has been restored. We don't know what it was, uh, yeah. but now it's fine. So we, the, we, we are filling the questions as we go along. Okay. Go ahead and start number three. So, I, I, I think that uh, the other questions up to six all relate with the queries. Maybe we could go to something which relates to a different, uh, uh, a different issue. Because I think I we've got sure a handle on it. As long as we have access, it is going yes. to be okay. No, okay. Because uh, I wanted to. No, I but here, okay. in the interest of time, you could uh, jump to seven. 
Okay. And give us the uh, six of seven. Sure. Okay. I will go to the num number five, which is the number of Parisian collisions. And let's go here. So everyone, please, can you listen? And let's go. I, I'm going to introduce another aspect of the reporting in the system. Okay. So should I move on, uh, Dr. Timokic? So can everyone? Um... Uh, great, what do you think? Um, can... Uh, let's, um, let's wait for a moment because it seems like they have coffee break. Yes, it's a coffee break. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I'll go and make some tea for myself then. Engineer right. Monica, we can. Can you hear us? Sorry guys, so you know we have some things that uh, we are also eating right here in this room. Yeah, we just noticed that, that you have a coffee break. Uh, so yeah, go ahead, no problem, uh, Amir. So as we go forward, yes, uh, because it's already going to five here. Yes. Yeah, we are about to finish just one more component, the uh, dashboard, right Amir? <laughs> Amir, can you hear me? Uh, you are muted. Yes, there's a dashboard is left. So that's the, the dashboard, dashboard, and that's that, that's. And all. then they, yeah. they can do the other questions themselves, and I can provide the answers later on. Yep. <laughs> so please, uh, uh, Doctor, okay, please let me know when you're ready. Because we added conditions today. Okay. So maybe that's something we could check. We added a number of conditions today.
I think I think you get the gist of those ones. I'm worried about the next things. differently in the Does not contain or contain.
Because they might be away from the jet, but uh, they have been spotted at the jet. And so the intersection, in, so my question is, in here for GIS, the intersection. So if you can point it to the GIS uh, locator, does it mean it's at the, it's at the center of the junction? Yes. The true center of the junction. It's the center of the junction. Because he has already put it. And that is one of one of the things which has been done. But now we have to relate the we have to relate each of these accidents to the infrastructure. But now I assume if a police officer collects the let's put the example in the GPS and Yes, but it will not relate it. It relates to the map, not to the, not to this layer. So what are the? This layer. Everything is linked to the map because you can overlay. That can be that you can overlay by the group map and the grid. No, yes, but it's not. If you look. This thing is And that is the Yes, but then there is a third step of now connecting these things to the road segment. Because when you are searching, what are you searching? You are searching either in the section or a road segment. You are not searching by coordinates. Yeah, so the, the point, I mean, in addition to putting the coordinates, we will also uh, this will be Yes. So in the GIS layer, there are elements. One of the elements is both sectors. The other element intersection. is intersection. Yeah. So it is some descriptive thing. Yes. That then we have to relate with our coding so my question is able to get yes. is in that process of omitted exactly that is the main question the process is not a hundred percent why <laughs> it's still something but uh, <laughs> so one of the things which has to be done at the infrastructure level mm -hmm. is then to be able having got the thing we know where it is, we can see where it is. Mm. Then we connect it now to the section so that when we are doing our touches, mm. it is there. But visually, we can see. Mm. Yes. We can see the car. But because we have two things we have the Google Maps, we have the maps, mm. but we have also have the JLS layer. And we, yeah. So that we see. Uh, Amir has checked out of there. I think they also took a small break. Mm. Okay. We've had uh, some very interesting discussions on this, but I think that. Hello, are you guys there? Yes, I'm here. Just hello. Yes, we are. Mia. Okay. We had a little tea break, and I think that we should proceed to uh, yes, go to the next thing. Okay, sure. So, everyone, can you hear me? I think the room is half empty. More than half empty. Should I continue? Kim, should I continue? Uh, Tim, can you hear me? Tim, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. I can hear uh, you. So should I continue? Half of the room I can see is empty. So can we get back to our desk so that we finish up?
ready the doctor to work at you. Um, please let me know when I should start. You are muted. I see. So can you hear me now? Good. So let's go ahead. Awesome. So please go ahead and do these numbers. So these are usual typical uh, queries that you may write and run. So please go ahead and solve to it question number four. So we did partially and I'm sure that you are able to figure out the rest. If you have any questions, please let us know and we will be happy to help you. So the next section that I want to show you is a part of the more advanced uh, reporting system, which is we call it the dashboard. And if you go to the collision, this is we call it the standard dashboard. And um, sorry, just let me open uh, mine in another window. So just, um, and just give me a second. So here is my dashboard and this dashboard is, let me just refresh my page and show you the dashboard. So this dashboard, if you remember earlier in this meeting, I talked about some emphasis areas and overall information. And you can see here, we call it, this is the base dashboard. And here it shows the collision information. On the left menu, on the, left, on the top, you can see there are three tabs, overview, emphasis area, and comparative. So, and on the down, you have two panels. On the left side, you can see the filters, and um, on the right side, you can see a map uh, and the result of essentially the, so a, a chart, map, and some tables underneath. So essentially, this is an interactive reporting tool that will help you to, uh, to summarize the data. So if you want to, for example, one of the, for example, one of the solutions to solve the question that we had, um, if we want to see that, for example, what's the trend of the in, uh, collisions happening in our, in our entire network or parts of our network, is to look at this data. On the left side, I can uh, filter severity by fatal, injury, or PDO, or I can, for example, select what type of the people were involved. Are there pedestrian involved, cyclists involved, or motorcyclists involved? And then here's a date range. So for example, by default, it's usually the last five years. So if I go ahead and let's say that I just want to see the uh, fatal and injury collision, I can simply remove it. It will automatically update the charts for me. And if I go over the chart, you can see the numbers will show up and I can see what are the values are. And down, you can see that, for example, it shows that the locations of the the top locations, essentially the top 10 locations of that has lots of fatal and injury collisions. And these are the one of the parts in the network that we would like to go and take a look and uh, re review it. And you can see that there are these intersections here and these, for example, road segments here as well. So they have lots of fatal and injury and maybe someone will need to go and take a look at this section of the road, investigate and see what's going on. And on the bottom, you can see that we have the high frequency, for example, road segment, the top 10 road frequency segments. And as you can see, it shows all those road segments. I can click on any of these ones and go and read the information about them. 
And then I can go ahead and even look at the 10 high, high frequency intersections as well and review them. And I can click on any of those ones. As you can see, if I want to say, let's bring all of them here. And let's say that I just want to see where is my pedestrian collisions is happening. And what's the distribution? You can see that, for example, in for example, 2016, there were 20 um, uh, total collisions, 19 fatal and uh, 19 PDO, and for example, one fatal and injury. And you can see that it will filter it only here. You can see that now the sections have changed because these are showing only the uh, pedestrian in, in involved collisions. And you can see these these are the road segments and intersection that happened. And I can click on any of these ones and see what was the Joe ID and see what's going on. And I can navigate it. And here I can say that, for example, I want the cyclist collisions as well. And then it will show me the cyclist collisions as well. And you can see that, for example, it's showing other segments. I can change the filter date. For example, I want it from, for example, let's say that I want it from, uh, let's change the year. I, would ch I, will, I want it from just, for example, 2019 first to this one. And it's happening. And there's one other advanced topic area that we'll cover later, which essentially you can uh, tag your location with certain um, tags, and then you can, for example, filter the data based on those um, information that you have. And I can go, um, this was the overview. And here, just let me show you, let me just select everything and put the dates back to 2016 and see what are the locations that one. And I want to show you, introduce you to another concept, which is really interesting and which is important to all of us. Just let me refresh this page and reset everything. Is the concept of the uh, concept of the collision diagram. And let me go ahead and look at the top 10 frequency intersections. That this is related to what I was talking initially about the initial impact types and everything. So it's at this intersection at City Park Drive and at uh, um, Limoru Road. If I click on that one and it goes and open that intersection for me, and you can see that it's highlighting for this one. This one had lots of collisions. And I can go to the details, all the information that's there, and I can go to the last tab, which is the collisions. And this one shows all the collisions that happen. And you can see that this intersection, there were three fatal collisions and one seriously injured. Uh, collision and this is this seems that this intersection has high number of collision. I want to see what are the patterns of collision happening at that segment. So I will select all these inter all these um, um, in in collisions and click on this the first button on top left. Just take a look at this button here. It says collision diagram when I'm standing on top of that one. And when I click on this one. It will ask me when is my report and what type of intersection I have. Let's assume that I will just put intersection. I will go over it and talk about what the top meaning of type is. And then it shows me the diagram of this collision because there is no that much data. It shows just these collisions, but you can see that it's drawing that, for example, there were collisions coming from, for example, uh, north to south, and you can see that there were uh, uh, this was, if, who remembers what was this symbol for before we, I go scroll down? This is one car. You can see that, you remember our logic? The logic was that there were, um, there were, uh, let me zoom in a little bit. Um, so you can see that there is a one arrow, which means the one car was coming. And there, there is a one uh, block, which means that there was a fixed object there. And the car hit that object, which means that this is an SMV. And if you have doubts, you can come down and take a look and say that this was an SMV unattended. Essentially, one car was there or something, and someone parked there, uh, and then someone hit it to that one. So essentially, if you take a look, and let me just go ahead and zoom it out, on the bottom, you can see the legends of that one. And you can see that, for example, if there is a turning movement, angle collision, um, approaching rear end sidewalks, SMV, all those kind of information are available. And you can see that there is a number underneath each of these ones. And if you look at here, it, here is the health menu in, the, in this one, it's showing that the first number means the fatal collisions, the second number means injury, and the third number means PDO. And you can see that there are, in this, for example, they were unknown, there was, so that the initial impact was not set, 
when you don't have any information. And then, for example, you can see that we have two um, SMV unattended here. It means that maybe people are parking here, for example, on this side of road, or there are some objects there or some obstacles. So maybe the geometry needs to be fixed. Maybe there is no parking signs need to be added. So by these patterns, if you see in which direction this is happening, you will be able to take a look and see what was the pattern of the collision happen at your intersections. Um, any questions, any comments? And again, like anything else in our software, when you get the report for that one, you can simply just go ahead and export it to, for example, pictures. And then I can just share this one, put it as a report in my Word document or anything, and write my report on it about it and share it with my other colleagues. And that's all about this one. Um, so let me go back to the dashboard. Any questions? So uh, the first one was the overview, the general information. This is a kind of a general. In the, I'm I'm back in the dashboard, in the collision dashboard, uh, and then I was in the overview, which is the general information. But if you remember, at the beginning of this session, I talked about um, the the uh, emphasis areas, and essentially what we were doing is that um, we um, we had some um, emphasis areas like intersection, pedestrian, cyclists, motorcyclists, young drivers, old drivers, aggressive driving, distracted driving. So essentially in this one, you can see what are the information based on the time frame that you uh, specify. You can see that what's the performance of network. You can see that you don't have that much cyclist issues. But it seems that there are lots of issues related to the pedestrians and aggressive drivings. And for example, so this means that you may need to have some sessions. So, for example, for the people to, for example, to obey to the, for example, crosswalks um, for drivers so, um, to respect the pedestrians and aggressive driving means that you are having vehicles that are going either too fast or they are uh, not pulling too close. You may need have to have um, kind of training session for the drivers. You may have uh, law enforcement for, for example, speeding. For example, you need to uh, install uh, speeding cameras or you need to do other stuff to do that one. And you need to do that one. And maybe distracted driving is, and the intersection are the next. So, and essentially like the other one, you can filter and say that I just want to see the fatal information, see that where I have the most fatal, you can see that, oh, most of your pedestrian collisions are fatal. So this means that um, you, we, need, we need to work on the pedestrian information. And again, you can, for example, just filter the sections that you want. And like any other chart and in system, you can click on this button and can say that, hey, I want PDF file or I want to export it as JPEG file. And then I can put it in a report, just embed it into your Word document or Excel file or whatever you want to report to. So you can have it and say that this is happening. The other part is that, hey, for example, you want to see the progress. And for example, you implement a policy. And for example, let's say that for the aggressive driving, you will help sessions. You make the, for example, graduation levels in the um, um, in the, your uh, driving uh, schools, and you want to make them what happened. We will go to the comparative, and in the comparative tab, you have those emphasis areas, and you can compare. For example, here it's comparing a, a, a kind of a five-year interval with the last two years here by default, and it sh you can compare that what happened by that policy that you applied. For example, you had those sessions, and you can see the pedestrian. Uh, Pedestrian um, um, cr um, collisions were dropped significantly. Um, although, for example, the number of the uh, fatal and injury collisions inc increased, so from 23 to 29, but you reduced the total number. And if you further come down, you can see that this one shows a, a, a sign and say that, hey, in intersection, you have 58% setback, but in pedestrian, you have 28% setback. And then you can simply get this one, uh, convert it to pay, JPEG, PNG, PDF, whatever you want, and then Im embed it in your reports. The other ones, for example, you want to see that what happened to your young drivers. Oh, it seems that the young drivers, your session was uh, giving real good results, and you had 92% uh, improvement in young drivers' collisions. So it means that your policy was working, and you need to enforce it and work on it. And this is a real good news that you, as a policymaking engineers, you are able to reduce collisions by that one. 
but it seems that the aggressive driving is not solved and you may need to work on the aggressive driving essentially. So any questions, any comments, Craig, if you have anything to be added to this section, please let me know. Now you cover this pretty, pretty well. Sure. So um, ladies and gentlemen, so you can now go ahead and see that, for example, extract the number of pedestrian collisions. You are able to see that the number of motorist cyclist collision that happen. So you can list the type five location intersection mid block with non largest number of pedestrian. You can go simply to your dashboard and take the top five ranks and um, and present it. And you can put it in your tables. You can uh, identify the road segments mid blocks uh, with highest collision frequency. You are able to identify the intersection with higher collision frequency. And you can generate the collision diagram for intersection with highest frequency and save it as JPEG. I showed you all of these ones. And then you can run report for accident rumber, which we did it before. So you can essentially go and generate a report for a specific collision number. And then the third question that was, was your home takeaway for our next session uh, is that what are the, these are the combined questions. So that show all the injuries collisions on the map. This is essentially you need to filter the, the, the collisions on the grid and then press the show on map and see it on the map. You can filter the pedestrian collision and then show it on the map. You can choose the mid block and the highest number of the collisions, answer the following question, for example, the total numbers. You are able to do these ones based on what I do. And then run charge reports for all of them and export it to PDF. Or you can see that you can um, see that if there is a pattern, for weather condition, lighting condition, initial impact type, and then all these questions. So these are your take, uh, take away, your kind of homework, and um, you don't need to, but just I think I highly encourage you to do these ones. These are the queries that you may run, and I think this is a good practice for you to do this one. Uh, thank you very much for attending. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know, and we can talk about it. And this is, we have another session. This was our introduction course so that you get used to the system. You can go now, you have access, all of you have accounts, go ahead, play with the system. The data is not uh, fully real to so these are, some of them are, and there's a portion of the data that has been entered to the system. Dr. Tumokesh can talk about that one, but feel free to play with it, see what's going on, uh, try to uh, understand the system so that when the deployment is happening, uh, we have um, we have you right engineers ready to hop on and try to uh, make your um, roads safer. Greg Pedro. Yes. So is there any, any question, any, any comments? And uh, like I, uh, Amir was saying, uh, this is the basic training. Uh, if you get uh, very familiar with the system by answering those questions, then obviously we can have follow up meeting. Uh, we might answer any question you might have. Please make a note of those questions, suggestions. Uh, Amir already made some notes. Uh, so we will obviously improve uh, and add functionality that we will ask for. All right. So that would conclude our 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 training. Uh, I think we are very much coming to the end of our training today. I think the idea was to ensure that you who are administrators know everything about the program, what you can get out of it. Uh, what we may not have covered a lot is the police thing, which uh, is very extensive and uh, we are going to leave that for our discussions with the police uh, when the training will be taking place almost over a two day period. So the idea was to be able to capture everything. Uh, there are some additional things that need to be done. For example, uh, 
we will delve into some small elements of customization, for example, if you wanted to customize. But we can't talk about it now because when we're just introducing, it's better to talk about it at a later stage when we have a better understanding of how the thing is, we have a better hope of how that is going on. The other aspects, there are some things which are uh, the in, in, related with the infrastructure that uh, we are discussing exactly how they are going to be finalized. Uh, some of the information that we have here is erroneous in terms of maybe the naming or it is too long. So we've talked with Kenna. Kenna I was in the process of uh, being able to update and simplify the GIS data because the information we got and put in the database came from uh, KRB. So we needed to simplify and even correct some things. There was some, the origin, original information we got had uh, a significant amount of uh, uh, errors uh, which needed to be corrected and so on. So it's still work in progress. As uh, Amir also mentioned, we have only put a uh, uh, hundred and something, 195 crashes over that period of time. That period of time, uh, we are talking of a significant number. We are talking of almost 7,000. Uh, uh, we have records of 7,000. Yes. But to be able to put it in a way that uh, we can analyze it in tests, in this software, it will take a lot of time because the police doesn't record all the information that we need to be able to put in here. So even this sample that we have here, to try to clean it up and be able to load it up was a significant effort uh, uh, on the consultant's time. And because of the limited time, we need to move forward. So we only took a sample to kind of show. So this is an overview. Uh, you have now access, but we see that as we are going to move on, we are going to do deeper and deeper training until we reach a point where we are more comfortable with everything. We want to be able to move to a level where we can then start the piloting by the police. Because if we don't start that in time, it's in our critical part, then uh, 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 they, everything is going to be delayed. We will go beyond the loan agreement period and so many other issues. And so we thought that we give you this as an overview as people who need to be able to add others on, work with the others, so that at least you have an understanding of where we are. Now, the technical people will have to do things. We will have to change the GIS. We will have to update all those information. We are going to have more interaction, definitely, with you. And uh, there are issues, as I was mentioning to you, about infrastructure being able to update it well, when we got it from the police thing, we have the coordinates, we bring them into the database. There's some cleaning process which needs to stay with that. And uh, right now we are going to do it, but we have to make sure that it will be done by you people uh, when maybe our contract is over. And so the training for that and the practice for that has to be done as well. So we would say that this is uh, 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 an introduction over everything, but it gives you an understanding that you are able to move forward with. So I'm very thankful that you are able to make this uh, uh, opportunity to come to the training. Thank you for being very interactive, uh, listening, uh, participating, trying the things out. Uh, sorry that uh, because of how everything is, it would have been best if we were all in one room with uh, 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 our colleagues from Canada, and we're all working together. But unfortunately, because of things which have been going on, restrictions, COVID, this is the best uh, that we can do for this uh, particular time. But as we move forward, uh, we trust that uh, things are going to move faster. Our colleagues from Canada will be here next month.
and uh, we'll hopefully have a, a better time to interact from very, very specific things. And then we'll, when we'll be uh, meeting with the police. Yeah. So thank you very much. Uh, Engineer Monica, you have a word or two to finish up with? Um, I really do not want to take much of your time. Hello, you can hear me now. Um, I really do not want to take much of your time. I know it's been a very long day. Uh, the people who began their day very early in the morning. Uh, my name is just to thank everybody uh, for finding time to attend this meeting. And even to the consultants, uh, both in Canada and here in Kenya. Uh, for making this possible. I know it is the beginning of things, so uh, probably at this very moment, um, uh, it might not be, uh, you may not have gotten everything that you want, but I would want to believe that more of this uh, is going to happen. And even as we interact with the system, we'll be able to even learn more, even on our own. Um, mine is just to add the consultant to be available uh, whenever there's an issue that we want to be clarified as we interact uh, with the system, you will be there uh, to support us. Um, I just wanted uh, um, to make just a few comments and maybe request uh, for um, uh, a clarification of the way forward. I know this is a training for the system administrators. There will be some other two sessions for the power users and the general users. And then as administrators, uh, you will be, um, you should be in a position to be able to know what the power administrators are able to do and also what the users are able to do. So mine is just to ask if um, you can be um, allowed those who may be probably might be willing to join uh, these other group of users for the training so that they can get a better parts of it. Uh, the reason why I'm saying this, I think once we roll out the thing, it is as the administrators who will even have that opportunity to train even uh, more people. Because of, um, you know, in government, probably somebody has been transferred or you are taken to another given some other responsibilities. But if you have a better grasp of how the system works, you will, we can be able to um, support some of our colleagues who will be joining us even later and make the system continue. Um, so um, that request, if it is um, allowable. And the other request, I think, which uh, the consultants alluded to, uh, some of these things when you do them online, uh, there are a lot of um, you know, communication. There are gray areas probably would want a one on one interaction. So, as you say, that the consultant will be coming in in August, and I would want to request that if we so request that you grant us an opportunity for a one on one uh, session with the consultant TS to take us through just this, uh, in that way, it will sink even better. Um, places where we are having difficulties, we even now be able to show us how to go about it on one on one. And even the areas which we have discovered later as we interact with the system, that opportunity when it comes to be able to see that clarification. Yes, so those are the few things that I wanted to clarify in addition to some of the comments that were made during the presentation. Uh, still this opportunity I think to make it better where there are errors in the data that were provided. I think we can still work together because what we want to be delivered at the end of the project is something that will be of benefit uh, to all of us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Nia. We very much appreciate uh, the time that we've had together and uh, the